for the next two or three weeks, expect mostly sushis and voicemails, as well as obviously the full rebuttals whenever there is a JW Broadcasting. Um, it's just there's a lot to focus on behind the scenes. You all know that I am taking legal action um, in response to the defamation. As I've said before, it's not something that I am doing lightly. It's obviously any kind of legal issue, any kind of legal proceedings are always intensely stressful. You know, whether you are um, whether you are the, the plaintiff or the defendant, it's a stressful thing to go through. But I feel it's very, very important to do this. And I understand that it's asking a lot of you patrons in a way because you are supporting not just the video content, but you're supporting the channel and, you know, the litigation. The issue is that, again, we had this disastrous blow to the channel last year, a sustained misinformation and bullying campaign that unfortunately led to a huge drop in support. Thankfully, many patrons stuck around. They could see through it. Uh, this is a statement that was issued via Twitter by the M7, uh, September 30, 2023. It outlines the background of what happened in 2022 with Lloyd. Um, it talks about his threat of legal action, the letters that he issued to 12 individuals um, and the demands that he made with those letters. Um, when he failed to silence the community, he then filed criminal defamation claims uh, within the Croatian legal system at the end of 2020 to April. So in a statement that he also released, he outlines that that's what he has done. And then he also highlights that since it's impractical and too costly to include all 12 individuals who received warning letters, the translating costs alone are eye-watering. Seven of the most egregious cases were selected and the remainder, including any that have yet to receive a letter, may be included in future civil action. So Lloyd very clearly indicates here that he has had, you know, documents translated um, and that he would obviously then be substantially affected by translating costs um, in relation to this litigation. Incidentally, the defamation campaign is still very much ongoing. My lawyers are still on top of it. Uh, it's just that the Croatian legal system, I've learned, is glacially slow and it's probably going to be years before I see any kind of justice for what was done to me and my family. At the end of January, my family and I were subjected to a horrific violation of our privacy, combined with a misinformation and defamation campaign. I'm criminally suing for defamation, seven of those most instrumental in starting an online abuse campaign. But I do need to reference what happened for context because unfortunately it had an aftermath that I need to discuss with those of you who care about this channel and especially those who so generously support it financially. I'm certainly not going to labour the point in relation to the information provided in the statement because I think you can read the statement for yourselves. Um, it is my opinion, based on the information that we obtained from the court, that nothing or very little has been done. He's lodged an application. There are no specific examples, no evidence, no reference or timestamps or any information indicating as to what it is that we have allegedly defamed him in relation to. The court has asked for additional information because the application is insufficient, there's been no translating, so his story of I've spent money on translating, time, solicitors, to me, based on what I've seen, is absolute bullshit. But you can decide for yourself. Um, at the same time, you know, we need to g get to what happened. And, and obviously, you know, allegations are, and I think you've, I think you've admitted to this, that, that it wasn't just extramarital affairs. It was, it was uh, prostitution. Is that right? So, it, yeah, well, I didn't want to have any relationships outside of my marriage. So, yes, it was. Um, and just to be absolutely clear, um, it was prostitution leading up to, uh, you know, before the conversation took place in in December. So, yeah, that it was with um, sex workers that I was unfaithful with my wife. 
gutter activism. The real what happened here exactly version goes something like this. I went to Thailand during a mental health crisis at the end of 2021, brought on by huge upheavals in my private life, including mistakes I made and apologised for, the sort of thing that happens in relationships all the time, but aggravated by my cult background, and a former colleague in whom I'd confided betrayed my confidence and used frankly racist tropes about sex tourism in Thailand to try to destroy me. I'm trying to look into why a lot of the community are so uh, angry, and I suppose when you say judge me by my words, they, they might respond, judge me, well, I'll judge you by your actions. Uh, and of course, there has to be a limit as, as I get what you're saying about the private life but also I mean what if you what if you killed someone what if you did there has to be at some point where people go hang on and they think that you crossed that line you don't think you did you must have been aware with the sex workers that a lot of these would have been trafficked as children and, and that that did that is a sort of goes against something that's very important to you which is the protection of 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 child sex trafficking and that kind of thing right so I've I've only ever had sex with consenting adults. I, I don't mean to, I'm not in, intending otherwise. I, I, I understand people's concerns about sex trafficking and, and, and that kind of thing, but, you know, all, ultimately the bottom line is, are we talking about sex between consenting adults or are we not talking about sex between consenting adults? Well, with, I suppose with prostitution, it's a, it's a blurry line with, with regards to consent and where, where that, you know, we, we don't know. That, that's the truth of it. You couldn't possibly, you couldn't know a Thai prostitute. And a well, I, I, I dated a sex worker in Thailand. But I this is the thing that a lot has been said on YouTube where it's not based on anything I've said and it's not even based on things that Kim Silvio have said leading up to, uh, you know, before the conversation took place in, in December. So, yeah, that it was with, um, sex workers that I was unfaithful with my wife, yeah. And Gutter activism. The real what happened here exactly version goes something like this. I went to Thailand during a mental health crisis at the end of 2021, brought on by huge upheavals in my private life, including mistakes I made and apologised for, the sort of thing that happens in relationships all the time, but aggravated by my cult background, and a former colleague in whom I'd confided betrayed my confidence and used frankly racist tropes about sex tourism in Thailand to try to destroy me. But this is the thing that a lot has been said on YouTube where it's not based on anything I've said, and it's not even based on things that Kim Silvio have said.